What's up, guys? Um, just got done with a long teaching session, super interesting uh, one-on-one teaching session that I offer them. And uh, yeah, we were we were really going into some interesting territory about lunar cycles. You know, just the importance of understanding what lunar cycle you were born in and how that relates to your soul's evolution and um, you know just the different profiles of the different lunar cycles which you can tell by the difference between your sun and your moon or what you know, where the the moon is compared to the sun in that cycle you can yeah you can just search it on google like astrology calculate my lunar cycle and uh yeah so interesting um really long session um just got done and then kind of take a look on IG and I saw two posts and the first one was by a doctor, a holistic doctor who was, he made a list. He's like, things I'm not so worried about. Um, and one of the, you know, things like alcohol and the whatever chemicals are sprayed on lettuce and whatnot. And, um, you know, just different things that you see a lot of people almost have this attitude of like if you like I don't know if you if you put smoking in there right but just you know there's a lot of things that are vices um fast food you know that we live in a risk a risk society you know we live in a society where there's a lot of things that aren't good for us you know um but we, you know, some, you know, and some people are, are, you know, Puritans in the sense that they are, you know, completely, you know, just anything bad for them. Most people have, you know, vice, a vice, right? Even if it's like a super healthy person, but they drink wine, you know, a glass or two of wine. I mean, that's not really a vice, right? But like, that's like an example. Um, so... I think it's really easy to, and I'm. This is not my field, so I'm not gonna get get. It, I'm not gonna speak on the science behind it and whatnot, obviously, right? But I do think, from an energetic perspective, that, like, the main point of his post was that if you are, like, what's way more important than these things is, like, the amount of love you're you're getting, the amount of love you're giving, the amount of laughter you have, you know the boundaries you create around people you need to create boundaries right a lot of this more psych stuff that ends up being psychosomatic right um i, didn't, I forget everything every, everything he said but yeah you know just the amount of sleep the amount of water speaking of i'm gonna have some you know the amount of water you drink um and his main main idea was like it's like, he's not saying go and do all these things, you know, I think it, like drugs, alcohol, like, you know, eating fast food, you know, there, there's a long list. But it's like, he's like, you want to not, it goes back to the whole idea of perfectionism. You want to avoid them. But if when you do, let's say you have a night of binge drinking where you smoke, I don't know, a pack of cigarettes, your attitude should not be like, oh, I just ruined myself. You know, like, not that people think like that, but like. It's more about just the like doing the the most positive things for you, like exercising, right? Um, getting fresh air, getting sun, getting you know, like like I said, like socializing, having good relationships, intimacy, if you know, if that's if that's a possibility um, in your life, and you know, connections with your family, with your friends. Finding your true passion, right? So, I, yeah, I find it interesting because sometimes you see people who are so, ups like, like I don't want to call, there's no one I'm really thinking of when I say this, but, like, you see some people who are just, like, very, very clearly, like, miserable people. Um, but then they're just so obsessed with, like, eating the healthiest, you know, food like it's like you know just like the most whatever whole everything organic like not organic i know organic is a lot of people have said it's like a scam in a lot of countries or like at least like 
maybe in Italy, you're able companies are able to like to literally buy that organic um, label. But yeah, that was kind of his point. Um, and I think it, it, it's to me, it just makes me think of like a, a greater perspective of, of your life, right? Um, you know, you don't know ultimately how good or bad something is going to be for you. I remember when I was learning Vedic astrology, I was kind of learning both at the same time when I first started to kind of decide which one I wanted to go with before I chose Western. And I remember my teacher, she said something about like how, you know, like someone could have like a Venus placement that makes, you know, going, you know, drinking alcohol and going out to like little lounges and whatnot and having some drinks, like actually like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to butcher her words, but like less harmful and maybe like not even that bad of a thing than someone who would have different placements right, where it could be just, like, horrible for them. So I think it really, everything comes down to just doing your best and figuring out what works for you and, um, you know, and what doesn't. Something that, that's, like, extremely, because, like, yeah, like he said, like, I think above everything, like, we, we just need, like, and he wasn't trying to diminish, like, how unhealthy a lot of these things are, but what he, what he was trying to say is that, you know, if you're maximized in your health, in all these ways, but you're still, but you're a miserable person who has horrible relationships, who, you know, energetically you're in like a, you know, abusive relationship. Let's, let's just say even, even like you're a very good person, but you have horrible boundaries and you're in a very abusive relationship, right? With a narcissist or someone, you know, I just had a lot of, of, of uh, clients this past year who've, who've met women, female clients who, um, I guess I'm supposed to say women clients who um, have been like getting get you know have escaped those types of relationships with narcissists and just all the stories they've told me it's wild right so it's like you know that's those are the things that are really really important right those are the things that are affecting you way deeper than I mean obviously when I say a substance I'm not referring to like heroin or like, you know, there's obviously some substances that destroy you, right? Um, they're way more powerful than, than others, but it's just different. Yeah. It's different person to person. You know, some people, you know, smoke weed their whole lives and like, you know, it has whatever effect it has, but it's, it's a different effect person to person. I really think that God, like, I, this could be more of a belief, but for example, for me, I, <clears throat> I'm going a little, a little bit off topic, but, um, you know, I think that, like, you are sort of guided in your life, right? Like, for example, like, when I used to, I used to smoke weed a long time ago, and uh, is anyone who follows, follows me no, follow, has followed me for, you know, any significant amount of time knows I you know, I can't, I have nothing against people who smoke, but like, I can't, I, I don't do it. I can't because it makes me go crazy. And it used to be the opposite. You know, it used to be like this very relaxing, um, experience up until I was about 20 or 21. And then it just flipped on me. And I think that that's an interesting example. Cause that's really like, I think spirit in some way, the spirit of that herb being like, okay, like you, like you're done. Like, this has helped you as much as it's going to help you. And I've heard so many people have similar stories with that. And then, you know, with just substances in general, I've noticed that, right? It's so interesting. Like, even alcohol, right? Like, a while ago, like, when I was younger, like, when I used to drink, I was so much more social, right? I would, it would give me, like, a confidence I didn't have, right? And I would walk up to all types of people and, you know, just make friends so easily, meet girls, all that kind of stuff. So it was really fun. And then now it's, I don't know, it, there's nothing that makes me feel better than a workout, you know, like there's no drug, there's no, I mean, obviously I haven't tried <laughs> all the drugs, but like, you know, there's nothing that makes me feel better than how I feel after you know, I go on one of my runs. It doesn't even have to be like the most intense run ever. I mean, yeah, that helps, but 
just that clarity is that clarity and that relaxation in the mind, you know, and especially when I, when I combine music with it, there's nothing, to, nothing better in the world. Right. Um, so I think that like your body and when you learn to listen, when you get better at listening to yourself and seeing your reactions and not, cause like it could be like, I know people who, you know, do different party drugs and stuff and like, Obviously, I, I like electronic music, so I go to a lot, of, you know, or not a lot, but well, yeah, good amount of, of concerts where, you know, a lot of people are, are taking that. And it's just interesting, right? Because it's very easy to idealize and kind of say chase the dragon with respect to those. But then, like, I, like, I went, so I started going sober to these concerts, right? <clears throat> um, not every time, but... Like I did it when I was in Peru and it was just so fascinating because I, I worked out really that day. I did two things, right? I, I had like a great workout and then I had like an amazing astrology session where I did my first ever like um, basically, yeah, like it was like a, like a six hour session where I had no experience with, um, I don't know why my mind's blanking on the word, it's so annoying. It's probably because I just had such a long teaching session rectification right where you figure out someone doesn't know their birth time they just know you know, you know you're, you're trying to figure out their birth time right and i did that successfully and um and then after that like a full reading so i did two things that really raised my energy like the workout and my astrology you know my work my you know astrology and and doing something i never accomplished before the first time i tried it and like you know doing it my own way so it's cool right and then i went to the show and really good DJs, and my vibe was just like so much different, so much better than it than it ever was. Like days that I would just go to a show and, and drink and whatever, you know. So it's like, and I I had so much more energy, and I was like so, like I was still like the first fifteen seconds I walked in, literally, this doesn't happen to me. Like like this isn't something that just happens to me. Um, like a, this girl just like walks up to me and like instantly starts like hit, like talking to me like hitting on me like like saying all these like amazing compliments like r like literally like it was 50 it was a, right when I walked in like and that just shows you know that she, you know she picked up on my energy you know my 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 aura whatever you want to call it was just like off the chains that never would have happened like you know so my point is that in the past you know alcohol and, and whatnot would would raise that right at least you know, I would feel good. I'd feel, I, I, and that feeling good would make me feel social and whatever. But it, it had its time, and now it's just not that fun. You know, like it's like I wish it was, but then it's like, do I really? Because it is kind of poison. So, yeah, I think for different people, I always tell people who smoke weed, like I don't judge you because, you know, I used to smoke a lot, and then I think that you know it's different strokes for different folks in terms of when you're meant you know when you're meant to quit and that's that 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 could be up for debate these are just these are more of my beliefs about it and i think yeah it does vary person to person but so yeah back to what what he was saying the doctor right um i think that like when you really like and this is what i always talk about with virgo and pisces the axis is that when you're always worrying about something right like i always say like every day gives you a million reasons to worry about something f for the future, right? You can always take that path, right? A lot, a lot of the time that's when you follow logic uh, or too much, not, that's when, you, when you're too much in your head, not enough in your intuition slash heart, right? That's kind of one of the shadows of, lo of, of uh, like the low manifestation of, of, of Virgo. And I'm not saying it's a lower sign than Pisces. It's, it's not at all, but that's, they each have a shadow and a high side, right? So it's like, that's the shadow of Virgo, right? Is, is, is that it could just worry, 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 and be so much in the, in the head, in the headspace logic that it can lose its essence and connection to, to the divine and connection to that oneness and also connection to that dreaminess and that just allowing things to just happen, right? Allowing, having trust in God. But then if you're too much on the Pisces side, then you might be someone who's, overly idealistic you know who's not willing to put in the work who might think oh yeah like 
God's got my back or the universe has my back and then takes things to the extreme with things like addictions and, and whatnot, right? So, yeah, I mean, I think it's just all so much and it's all so complex that you ultimately, the only answer is to just pray, <laughs> you know, pray that, you know, for your health, pray, you know, like pray and, and, and have conversations, you know, with whatever, you know, God or, you know, whatever the universe, whatever it is that you pray to. And just let them know, you know, that you want, that you pray for your own, you know, not, I'm not just saying your own, obviously you pray for other people too and the world and whatnot, but like this is, you know, in context of, of yourself, you pray for your, you know, that you, that you're for your own good health. And if you do have vices, you pray that, you know, um, I guess that they don't have the horrible long-term effects, you know, like, and that, you know, because people use things as medicine, right? People who, who smoke a lot, it's a medicine. You talk to any of them and you ask them why they do it. It's because people want to feel good, right? People want to feel good, which isn't bad. And it's the same thing with people who do heroin. They want to, a lot of times they want to, you know, they want to escape feeling something very, very deep, um, or they just got hooked somehow. You know, a lot, a lot of people got hooked from, you know, prescription pain medication, as we all, all know, um, in, in the, in America at least. So, yeah, um, I always like to live by the mantra that every, every day is a new lifetime, uh, at my old university in America, the slogan for the American football team was win the day. And then it's like Nike, pretty much like that's where Nike was formed at the university I went to. So just do it, right? And like those are very powerful statements because both of them convey – that you're not looking too much at the past, you're not looking too much at the future, you're doing what you know in this moment, in the here and now, is good for you. And each day that you win, you know, good. And I, in, my, in my session, I was just, we were just talking about like the idea that there's so many different potential seating periods, right? Like, like, cause we were going through this, the writing of this one, author and just he was talking about you know like with the Saturn and Jupiter and just just how like I just was like you know like they're like something like a, a new moon right hi Esme you want to join um you know that could be like a seeding time right that could be a seeding time for the collective but then like we have all types of new moons or like events like that 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 you know really reflect the start of a new cycle so it's like but like we don't always know when they are i mean yeah we can try our best using astrology to know but maybe there's something we don't know about you know um and we learn about it like you know 10 years down the line and we're like oh damn like i wish i was paying attention to the you know the cycle i have of um you know my like some type of you know venus cycle or whatever mars cycle right as me so, um, yeah, so it's like the more days that you can be on your shit, the better. But, you know, I think like the most, imp like, I don't know, like I felt my lowest when I was just moving here where I didn't have my, my three, four, well, there's really five, but two of them are still in Romania, but you know, these three fur babies, these friends of mine, you know, without them and in a new place, right? Like somehow I was not given, like, you know, I went from like, I was always, I've always been really busy, you know? Um, my schedule is usually quite packed, whether it's, you know, most, you know, most days having something to do like a live session, of, you know, like a current astrology follow up, a class, and if not, you know, obviously I have you know to record my nail readings at some some points, right? So, 
um, and then I could create content. So like, it's like, you know, it's a lot of stuff. But there was this period where I just like my, my, my weeks were just like not empty, but like very little, you know, like somehow people were not messaging me to do the follow up in current astrology, you know, and I just knew that like, God is like is, is, is making me. It's like it makes me because I'm someone who speaks and, you know, relays messages about my experience. I'm supposed to have certain experiences that can, you know, help other people. So I got to really feel what it's like to not have your passion to not like, like I was in a kind of depressed period, right? Where I didn't like, it was very hard for me to find that passion to just say, okay, I'm doing a reading right now. And when I found it after like 10 minutes in, I was like, all right, let's go. You know, like the fire comes back, but it was just that first step, you know, to get my computer out to have the chart out, to hit record, you know, the kind of mental, the, the you know, the, the mentality, what that, what that, you know, what that requires mentally. And um, I got to feel that, I think, because I know a lot of people feel that in their lives. And I think that as a healer, as, as someone, you know, it's easy as an astrologer like myself um, or anyone who does you know, psychology or who, who works with people on like a mental, spiritual health level. Um, it's, maybe, it's easy to kind of, for, and I've seen, I've seen pe this happen with people, right? To like lose that perspective because you have like healed your, yourself so much or whatever, right? That you get to a place where you almost forget what it feels like to be broken and the, you know meaninglessness in your life and I think I was meant to, to feel that to remember it to you know not that I had lost you know compassion that my life was just perfect or anything like that I'm not saying that I'm saying time off to 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 feel and have gratitude like damn I'm so lucky like that I have this thing that I love doing and that I'm really good at, you know? And it just gave me more compassion for people who, it made me want to help people who are still looking for that, right? Um, and I think a lot of people are quite stuck in that, in that way. And they don't really know what they like or they haven't really found what it is that they like and they're kind of living for the future for the idea of the future because the future is not a tangible thing it's just a, a metaphor it's something that you know we don't you can, you're not sure it's going to happen and the way you imagine it happening is never how it actually happens so like how many times in your life have you have you thought like okay this is going to happen like this this is going to happen like that right and then life Freaking pecs are so sore from this workout. Then life throws something at you or whatever. Like like life is full of surprises and then you think like, wow, you know, the idea I had of the future three years ago and then this happened or that happened, right? Like we, you know, it's just useless. It's like, I'm not say, saying don't think about the future and don't plan, don't save money, like stuff like that. But like, if you're too much in the future, as we know, anxiety, too much in the past, depression, or nostalgia, you know, like stuff like that, right? So it's like, how do you get yourself in that middle ground where you're still using, you're still learning from the past and you're moving yourself in the right direction for the future, but you're not overly indulged in either of them, right? I've seen so many people where it's like, they are like that. And then I've seen that happen with so many people, with so many people. And then it's not, you know, it's, they, they, they look back at it and they're like, you know, they kind of regret having had that mind set. But a lot of that, I think, is a defense mechanism, right? A lot of that is, it has to be a defense mechanism because if you're not happy with the now, right? Like I'm thinking of someone who's working a job that maybe it pays well, and but like they don't like it. Um, and in the society, you know, you, you have no choice, right? Um 
So instead, they kind of put all their, their eggs into that basket of like being as successful as they can in that field and, you know, just like the idea of like retirement, right? To me, that's such an odd idea. Like, how are you gonna? I spilled. I think it's just tea. Um, you know, like the idea of retirement to me, like I don't even like I don't know. I would never want to retire. Like, I don't know. It's just so. It's such a such an odd idea of like, like how life is set up for people, right? Like to work, 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 earn all this money. You know, as much money as you can. And then just stop and have no purpose. Like, don't you want to do something that you can, that has value, that makes you happy, that helps other, you know, depending on your karma or like what you're trying to achieve, right? Like some people, it's like a creative purpose, right? Um, but like, you know, something that you love doing, right? I think people, that's that's what, that's what like our sun sign is. Like as we move towards that north node slash sun, like, you know, we're, it's new territory that we're, we're here to explore, right? And if we're held back by our childhood, you know, I, I just made a post about this, our moon, you know, our emotions and whatnot, like our karmic emo, you know, emotions, then we're stuck. You know, we can be very stuck and not be able to, to have the, to go through the process of individual, individualism, right? Um, authentic, authentic, um, you know, individualism, you know, where you're discovering who you really are apart from the conditioning of society, you know, apart from the conditioning of your, of your family, right? Like, what do I love? You know, what's my, what are my passions? What are my gifts you know and I think a lot of try to get Esme on camera a little bit more I think a lot of people you know really lack in that area you know it's too hard so so yeah so I think like that's kind of what that article brought up for me is that um, you know even if you smoke even if you go out like let's say even drinking is a good good example like a few weeks ago you know i was kind of in a rut right and different strokes for different folks right and it wasn't like i was like so bad but it was just like every day was starting to feel kind of not exactly similar but like i was just starting to get into a little bit of a funk right so that week, I was like, like talking to my friend. I was like, "Yo, let's like we we should let's do something this weekend, you know, like one like Saturday night or something." And we did, and it wasn't even like it was that like crazy or anything we did. Like we actually <laughs> kind of screwed up the night, to be honest. But at the same time, you know, we drank and and whatnot, and it had this like resetting effect, you know, even just like getting together with your friends and laughing and. And just like having a different experience, you know, it can just have, like, it can just be like a reset. And um, I don't know, somehow for me, somehow occasionally I, I need to do that. And I know that it's not healthy, but I also know that what I'm doing isn't healthy, right? For my mental health, um, I need to get out of my box, you know, and uh, do things a bit differently. You know, have, have, have something that just switches everything up. Even if it's, like I, I was saying earlier, like I'm not, you know, I don't enjoy alcohol like I, I used to and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, anyways, you know, when it comes to like depression, you know, and, and all these, all the, everything, health, mental health. Cause like the other article I saw, I said I saw, I saw too, was Avicii's. I don't even know if I'll say anything about that, but Avicii, his um, white or his 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 he's so he's been dead for a long time, and there's different different theories about that that I won't get into. But his girlfriend just passed away at 34, can some cancer, and I don't know. It just kind of you know I don't know. Just was just kind of struck me like, huh. 
And I was looking at the comments, right? And, you know, one of the comments was about, you know, how it was a religious, very, someone very religious saying that, basically saying that he's going to hell because, you know, he committed suicide, if that's what you believe happens. I personally um, am not sold on that, but I haven't researched it enough, although I do have friends who have and who, who think that it was because uh, a documentary that he was going to release about a certain topic that is very bad that a lot of uh, very powerful people indulge in. We all know what that is. So, um, yeah. Um, and then, like, so, like, that was one comment. And it's just interesting the perspective people have, right? And I see it, like, when I, when I like, look at things like that, completely outside of, like, the spiritual realm, social media, you know? And another comment was, um, oh, they killed her, too, right? Completely different kind of, you know, there's just so many extremes, you know? And, then, and so it's like... It, you know, obviously a lot of the comments were just like, and then there's another comment that was like, someone can die of a broken heart because she, I think she, she did have something with her heart. So it was like, if someone's really, really sad, you know, like, I don't know how, I never, I didn't know, never knew about their relationship, how close they were or whatever. But if someone's really, really sad, you can, you know, you, you always hear about that with older people dying from, from heartbreak. Um, you know, like when, when like one of them dies, like the old couples, right? Like the other one dies soon after. So, yeah. So, yeah, the moral of the story is you just do your best. You don't get too down or too high. You, know, you don't get too perfectionist on yourself if you don't, um, you know, if you fall short one day. And, and, you know, even if you're having a bad period, don't let yourself get stuck in the story. Like, when you create that story in your mind, I'm depressed. Like, guys, I get it. Depression, I understand, you know, that there's different levels of it, right? I do have a, you know, a mood disorder. So, I mean, I, I go through periods of depression, you know? So I get it. It is, it is based on um, a lot of things, right? I mean, definitely the astrology playing into it. Or trigger, you know, different astrological time times triggering, triggering it, um, but yeah, you know, chemical imbalance, all that. I get it. But whenever I'm in those periods, I never allow myself to take the identity of a depressed person because, like, I'm just feeling. And this is, I'm not making that. I'm not the first one to say this. You know, I'm feeling depressed today. Now, not even today. I'm feeling depressed now, right? Because when you when you frame things like that, when you frame it like now, you're also letting, letting your subconscious and the universe know that there is a potential for that to change. Like clouds in the sky, right? It could be a crazy storm and then boom, it starts to fade away and then there's sunshine 20 minutes later. And I know we've like, but like when we when we just feel this really intense energy and we say, okay, um, this is how I am. We might not even be able be conscious of when it kind of starts to clear out. Maybe we're, you know, we're not giving us our, our selves that chance to experience that. So whenever I'm feeling really, really bad, I always tell myself like, you know, okay, Feel this, and I'm not perfect at this, by the way, not even close. I'm better, you know, like I think a lot of people are very good at giving, are good at giving advice, but then, you know, you know, the whole thing about following your own advice. But, um, you know, come back to it in 30 minutes. See if it's still as strong. See if the force is still as strong. And often it isn't. But it's a complicated topic. And, you know, there can be days where, there can be days where just, you know, even like a dream. I think, you know, well, actually, you know, the question is, you know, are dreams very karmic, right? Like, how karmic are dreams? Because I've definitely had 
many days. And I think we all have. I've always said this, like, especially if you don't remember your dreams and you just wake up and you had like the most crazy, horrible dream, like nightmare or whatever, right? And you just wake up fast, take your shower, like, you know, get out, start your day. Like, you don't think that subconsciously you're still affected by whatever happened in that dream on some level. Like, I, I, I was talking recently about the way you see yourself, right? The way, the kind of internal, the internal archetypal, is that a word, archetypal? Archetypal archetypal view you have of yourself in your own head, right? Which goes, which changes, you know? Sometimes you see yourself as like this amazing, resilient person or like this like hero or, you know, the wise person. But then sometimes you might see yourself as like, you know, like the sad, depressed, you know, the, the loser, the, you know, just whatever that archetype looks like, looks like for you in your unconscious, right? Subconscious. So it's like, I think our dreams play a big role in that. And, um, you know, I think prayer is really like, for me, where a lot starts. Um, you know, like I ask people who, who don't pray, like just, try, you know, you have to believe it. Like if you don't believe it, you know, you, you have to really just, and it's something you just, you, you get better at, you know, and you start to really, you know, like when you start to pray and you see the results coming, right? You've act like, wow, actually I manifested or, you know, it's not, it's really, you know, you can word it how you want, but like I prayed for that and it came true. Like you see that you're being listened to. You just have to ask for it. But you know, I always, when I, whenever I do pray, which it's, I don't pray every day. I, sh I would see, I don't want, I don't like to use the word I sh should in my vocabulary. Avoid it if I can. I pray as much as I do. Maybe one day it'll be more. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. It's just the way it is. The natural flow of things. And maybe the fact that I don't do it all the time, it just makes it way more natural and inspired when I do. I don't know. Maybe that's just how it is for me with my mutable energy. I don't know. But I always say the following statement before I pray. I always ask God, my spirit guides, you know, whoever is, is, is helping me from the different realms, protecting me. I always say that if the thing I'm, if whatever I'm praying for, like let's say, let's say it's something romantic, right? Like let's say there's a girl I like. I don't know. There's not, by the way, at all right now. But I'm just easy example. Let's say there's a girl I, I like. Right, I might say, I pray like if if this isn't supposed to happen, you know, like if we're not supposed to be anything, if whatever, right? Um, then I don't want anything to happen. I don't like you know you're the you're the best planner. Um, I don't want um, you know I'm not asking for something that's not in your will. Um, and I'll say something like, but I do, you know, and I'll, I'll always name reasons. But like, so let's say, like, I really like this person and I love spending time with her. Like, you know, she's like, really makes me, you know, I, like I, I'll name like reasons why, like from the heart, not from the ego, um, why I want this thing. But I won't even pray for someone. I, would ne I, I never would pray for someone. I would pray more, for example, like I pray that this girl if she act, if she feels the same way about me that she ha finds the courage to say it or to show it like as an example right and if she doesn't then i also feel uh pray you know that she has the courage to truly show that you know so it's like that and like i would never pray like for like money unless it, it like you know like, like from the from from like an ego perspective it would be more like you know, like I really pray, like look, I like I really care about about this, about that, about, you know, being able to ha like like it would come from having enough rather than ha than having an excess, right? And it w I would explain like why it's important, you know. So, anyways, damn, very long Pisces ramble. 
Um, maybe I'll stick this on YouTube. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Sometimes I feel a little bit um, vulnerable after doing these, you know, <laughs> when I talk for so long about so many different things and YouTube is a more ruthless place than um, Instagram, my Instagram at least. So, but I can't put a 40 minute video on Instagram. I didn't want to go live because I wasn't sure if I was going to keep talking or not. So, anyways, hope anyone enjoyed this and um, talk to you later if I release this. And Esme, 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 you have new videos coming soon. Hmm? Esme? Esme? Let's just do a cat check real quick. You know? Nina, look at you loving your new bed. And Mika is so mysterious, we don't know where she ever is. Maybe she's under my bed? Yep. <laughs> no, oh yes, Mika, look at you, you really got under there. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Ciao.